Hey guys, today's video is something I've been asked about a lot to show and uh, finally got the tools and stuff to do it because never really had to do it a whole lot before and uh, so I've done a few to practice on and I figured this would be a good one to make a video on because this one's bored plumb out. This is uh, actually my very first engine. It's an old five horsepower. I don't know what year it is. In case, you want, in case you're interested, here's the uh, original crankshaft out of it that's had better days. I just hung on to everything. What my plan is eventually for this is to put a uh, sleeve in it. You can see it's cylinders in bad shape, but I want to go ahead and do the valve guides, make a video on it, the way that part will be done, you know. And I got the new valve guides here uh, for quarter inch ID or quarter inch valve stems. 63709 is the part number for these. And the problem I've been running into is supposed to be able to thread the existing valve guide, then run this bolt in it, then run that nut down and pull the old one out. So it would come out, press itself out like this. And this is out of another engine. But the problem is, the valve guides that I'm getting are thinner wall than what comes out. So you can't put one back in. And I've yet to find these. So what I've been doing, is just reaming the inside of the old bushing and pressing these inside it. And it seems to be working. So Now on the intake, the actual guide is the aluminum block. So it's easier to do it. And the intake valve hardly ever wears out as much as your exhaust valve but it's still something you need to take note of and these valves aren't out of this engine but still old valves you see there's actually quite a bit of play on here considering it's an intake valve the exhaust valve is really bad shape here that's really excessive so we're going to try to tighten these up another little tip I recommend putting new valves in it after you do this just so you know everything's going to be as tight as possible. And you need a few special tools to do this. You need to find Briggs and Stratton part number 19269. It's a valve guide kit for quarter inch valve guides. Now if you're working on like a 12 horsepower or 8 horsepower, these tools aren't going to work. But all your smaller engines with quarter inch valve stems, this will work on them. So, I'm going to briefly talk about removing the valves, in case you haven't done that yet. The uh, valve spring will be in here just like this. So you'll use your compressor to compress it. It'll normally sit like this right in the center. And you compress it and move it over and your valve will come out like that. It's easier to show you like this and actually try to do it. I've tried several times before and your hands always block everything you can't really see nothing. Okay, so you, your two main tools, you got a few tools you have to have to do this. You have to have a counterbore reamer, a 932nd. This all comes with that kit. This is what your counterbore reamer looks like. You see it's smaller down here than it is up here. And this will go in here. It'll help you find the center of it. That way you can start counterboring out the guide. And you have this piece here that helps Keep everything straight as possible. Keep it from moving as much. And this will work on both valves. It actually fits better in the intake valve. Then once you get it bore, uh, reamed out, you got this driver tool here. And that's what you use to press the new valve guide in. It's actually a valve guide bushing is what these are. And I stocked up one. I got a whole bunch of them there. A little tic tac box comes in handy. And the other reamer that comes in the kit is a finish bore reamer. So after you get this pressed in, the end might get chewed up just a little bit. You'll be able to run these through just to open them up, to clean them up real good. I've actually used these before on engines that's had a stuck valve. After I get them out, I'd run this through just to clean it up. That works really good for that too. Okay, now, before I get criticized on this, this is the only way I have to do it right now. The, I'm sure you're supposed to do this by hand and there's not much information out there on this anymore. There's just a couple, handful of videos on how to do this. But I'm going to be using a drill with low speed to do this. I'm sure you're supposed to do it by hand to get more feel but 
this is a faster way of doing it and it seems to work good I mean I ain't have no problems with it so that's what we're going to be doing okay so your first step put this in here I'm doing the exhaust valve first you want to make sure that this falls down in the valve guide like this you want to take your new guide and you need to mark it you got to remember to go to the second mark you want to take it just a little bit further well you know you're getting it so I'll go back to the middle of my mark and I know I'll be good this way you're not taking it too far now some people will go all the way then stack two of these in here and uh, it just depends on your engine or how far you want to go with it some people really recommend that some people say it's overkill and there's no need to do it so we're just doing one at the top for right now is all we're doing so now that you get that marked I'm going to chuck it up in my drill I get the uh, set for the low speed higher torque like I said I'm sure you're supposed to do this by hand I'm just doing it the fastest way and it's really about the only way I can do it you always want a reamer to spin in this direction you never want to reverse a reamer it can damage the flutes on it get this centered I like to pull up to help clear out the metal. Get that in the mark. Alright, so that part's done. You can see a considerable amount of shavings come out. So you always want to do this with the, just a bare block, that way you can get all this back out of it. And you can just barely see the wall of the old valve guide bushing. This new one's going to go right inside it and it should provide a really good seal. If you look over here at the intake valves, you see the aluminum block is the actual valve guide. Okay, so you want to take your valve guide, your new one, get it started, get it centered there as much as possible. Now you're ready to drive it in. You don't want to hit it real hard either. As soon as you hear it hit solid like that, you're done. You stop right there. Now, you have your new valve guide. And chances are, your valve ain't going to fit right now. You see, it won't even go in there. So that's where you need that quarter inch reamer just to open it up a little bit. Opens it and cleans it. You still need to use this piece in here like this. You got to kind of look down and just visually centered on the, the guide. I know y'all probably can't see this. Try to get a light set up. That's the best light I can give you for right now. Just want to get it started in the valve guide. This will help keep it straight. You'll feel it go out of the valve guide. You'll feel it change here. So now Blow it out a little bit, and it should fit right in there perfect. Perfect. You see, you still have just a little tiny bit of play, and that's allowed for expansion. When this exhaust valve gets hot, it's going to be a little bit tighter. Now let's do the intake valve, and you'll see it'll be a little bit snugger. It just seems like that's the way they work out. I'll try to do it at this same angle as that. The way you got to a little better visual on it. So again, just in case your valve seat or something's different, you're gonna to wanna to mark everything again. So you wanna get the reamer started in there, drop this down, and see your mark's different again. So you really probably should just use a piece of tape or something on this to avoid confusion so now we got to go to the center of the bottom mark so i'm going to clean all this up after i get done and you're probably wondering if your intake valve is, don't have very much play should you go ahead and uh, put a valve guide new uh, valve guide in it anyway and simple answer yeah i would do it just to just so you know that everything's going to be good to go on it 
you don't have to put very much pressure either. Let the tool do the work. You know, run at a low speed, keep pulling it out like that, clear the chips out. Now it's opened up. Let me see if I can show you what it's looking like now. It's been looks like it's drilled out, but it's actually a precision machining. New valve guy and put it on the tool. Kind of got to hold it. it almost got to drop it into place. And it started going in. You just gotta finish it like that and you're good to go. Now you gotta do the counterboard. Now you gotta do the finish ream. And you're gonna be good to go. Now I got the new Brand new intake valve here. Put it in. Just a tiny, tiny bit of plane. Again, that's for heat expansion. It's a lot better than it was before. And the next thing you have to do on both valves, even if you're putting new valves in, you need to reseat these valves. Use valve lapping compound, your suction cup tool, and you want to reseat these until you, both surfaces start showing the gray ring on there. Then you know you're gonna have a really good seal. Well, I get asked a lot of times, not even on doing valve guides, they say, I'm putting new valves in my engine, do I need to reseat them? Yes, you do. Your valve seat is, even if you put a new valve seat in as well, you still have to do that. You're making the two parts fit together perfect. It has to be done. So yeah, that's a major improvement here on this engine. This engine, had a very rough life but so now the valve guys are done on it so now all that I have to do is just reseat them then uh, continue on with the rest of the engine work but I've been wanting to make a video on this for a long time and uh, finally got around to it so uh, hopefully I'm helping somebody out and like I said ordinarily you would use this to pull out your old valve guide to pop it out but for some reason my part numbers aren't crossing to the exact right part that comes out of these so and I've even ran into a bigger one too like this so that's something you gotta pay attention to and the way I'm doing it I'm sure somebody's gonna say it's not the right way of doing it and it may not be but it seems to be working so I know what the method I showed you but the method I showed on the intake valve is 100% correct that's the only way you can do it unless this becomes an issue we'll continue to do these like this until I run out of them bushings. I don't know if I got sent the wrong ones even though I've ordered from two different places and then sent the same thing uh, or not so but yeah I just wanted to show that that's all I'm going to show and I'm not going to be doing the, the valve the reseating on here uh, I do have other videos on that if you need to know how to do that just probably look up one of my rebuild videos I usually show at least one valve on, on the camera and both valves are done the same so now, if you're uh, if you're wondering what this actually does to your engine, if your valve guides are worn, you could put new rings and everything in there, and you still might get some smoke because this valve guide being worn is allowing oil to seep up through past your valve stem into the combustion chamber, and your exhaust valve wears more because of all the heat for one, and plus the carbon buildup. The carbon gets in here and almost acts like sandpaper on there and causes it to wear out faster too. And the, uh, but yeah, it's the same thing with the intake valve. If it's got a lot of wear on it, when your uh, intake stroke, you're gonna have that high vacuum here, especially like at idle, or when you first start with choke, it's actually gonna force the oil up through the valve stem there and into the cylinder to be burnt. So it might, an engine may be giving you symptoms of bad rings, but it might be your valve guys too causing problems. If you rebuild an engine, and you got real good compression, and you get a good ring gap and everything, seems to be good with the cylinder. 
your valve guide could be causing your extra oil burning. Now in overhead valve engines you usually have a valve seal on at least one of the two valves to help seal that and prevent that from happening too. But Well guys if you got any questions or comments feel free to leave a comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So I just wanted to make a video on valve guides. So Catch you later guys. Thanks for watching.